So if I'm speaking to a SMB versus a mid market versus a corporate audience, right? I may ask it, how do I message it to this specific persona or audience? And we have tons of data on that, right? So if you look at, for instance, Gong, you're having sales calls all the time. You're getting pains. You're understanding what people are looking for. You're understanding what's working well, what's not working well. So we can, we can look at all that data individually, but if we can start to analyze all that data and put that specifically into, into context now, and we have that, we can gain insights into that. We can start to ask it questions. We can start to segment it. We can look at what's working and what's not been working as far as sales go, and then base our messaging based on that. So taking all that data and feeding it, we can now really start to improve what our messaging is like, what our copywriting is like when we have all that extra data around it. Welcome to AI and Marketing Unpacked, where we simplify AI for impactful marketing. I'm your host, Mike Alden, here to guide you through the world of artificial intelligence and its transformative impact on marketing strategies. Each episode will break down AI concepts into manageable insights and explore practical applications that can supercharge your marketing efforts. Whether you're an experienced marketer or just starting to explore the potential of AI, this podcast will equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to succeed. So tune in and let's unlock the power of AI together. Greetings program. Welcome back to our AI in Marketing Unpacked, where I selfishly use this time to pick the brains of experts at keeping up with and integrating or layering artificial intelligence into content, social, advertising, search, and other areas of digital marketing. Oh, and you get to learn too. Subscribe to be shown to prepare yourself and your brand for this AI revolution and come out ahead. For product marketing managers, let's face it, you're juggling a million tasks from creating compelling narratives to deciphering market trends, all while trying to stay ahead in this ever-evolving digital landscape. It's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube while riding a unicycle. Challenging, to say the least. But what if there was a way to not just keep up, but leap ahead? Enter the game-changing world of AI, a tool and technology that's revolutionizing the PMM playbook faster than you can say, go to market strategy. From ideation to copywriting, from research to those daily tasks that seem to multiply endlessly, AI is transforming how PMMs work. But how exactly are savvy professionals leveraging this technology to supercharge their efforts? That's exactly what we're about to unpack. To guide us through this AI-powered marketing revolution, we've got a true expert in the field joining us today. I'm thrilled to welcome Gabe Wahab to our show. Gabe is a growth-minded entrepreneur turned intrapreneur with an impressive background in product marketing. He's worked with industry giants like HubSpot, where he played a key role in developing and implementing AI-driven marketing strategies. Gabe's unique blend of technical expertise and marketing acumen makes him the perfect guy to help us navigate this AI revolution in product marketing. Hey, Gabe, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Super happy to be here today. So glad to have you. This is exciting. I know we're going to be doing a lot to help product marketers and marketers in general, but could you walk us through initially your journey from having a tech background to being you know, a product marketing manager and how did that unique perspective kind of prepare you for leveraging AI, do you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I actually fell in love with technology pretty young. I initially actually wanted to be a doctor. I used to kind of go around watching surgeries and things like that when I was younger. I was really intrigued, but I was actually forced to take a programming class at 14 and just totally fell in love in love with it. And so that kind of led to just diving, diving in head first into everything tech. And then at 19, really when I was in college, I actually started my business. So this was this was right around the dot com boom and websites. Everybody needed a website. I don't know if you can even remember back to a time when people didn't have websites, yeah. but that's when people were just starting to need websites initially. And so that was something I had just learned how to do on my own. And so I started building websites for people and I just kept getting recommendations for that. But then that also transformed into me as well, because one of the early things I did was I was taking camera systems, like these old analog camera systems and uploading images every 30 seconds online, because this was all 56 K modems at the time. And, but it, it was something that was really helpful for the business I was doing. And they, they used to send around, I think 12 locations. They used to send around people to every location to make sure it got opened and things were being done right. And now they could just view it online. And n now it's so commonplace, but, but back then, you know, it took a lot of efforts and technology to get to something like that. 
And then that eventually spiraled into kind of walking into the HubSpot world and getting really proficient at HubSpot very early on as a partner, which then led to my company being acquired, which then led to me being recruited to working at HubSpot. And then that's kind of where I am, where I am today now is, and my journey into tech, but just always had a big love for, for computing tech software, you know, ever since I was a young one. That's, that's funny to me because when I was in high school, I was all about music. I went to college for music and then quickly, really quickly pivoted into computer science and history and got into that IT world, started building websites, started selling servers and everything IT. So I completely related to your, your journey, at least in that part of your life. Now, one of the things that we were talking about uh, before the show was just how much time AI has been saving you. And I wondered if you could kind of share a typical day in the life of a, of a PMM. A lot of folks listening maybe aren't, well, they certainly aren't PMMs and they may not even have PMMs in their organization. So they may not be familiar with the role and how AI is impacting or has impacted that kind of work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So PMM, for those who aren't familiar with what a product marketer does, essentially we take the product to the market and we bring the market back to the product. So essentially we're taking our product and positioning it to the market, understanding what the market wants, and then getting that out there live along with, you know, different go-to-market motions. But same thing, we're also listening to the market and bringing that in to the product team so that we get a good product market fit so that we understand what the users are looking for. So that could mean every single day is not the same, right? We're doing all kinds of different things all the time. So it just depends on where you, where your product is in that journey. And that could be changing constantly. So I might be training sales on how to sell the product. I might be answering sales questions. I might be creating messaging for the product. I might be doing customer interviews. I might be meeting with the product team and tell, you know, on specific features, we, we could be planning a big launch, right? For the product. There's so many different areas we can kind of branch into. And so there's a lot of different opportunities for using AI, just some of the basics, of course, you know, you have writing ideation, better understanding personas, you know, just those are some of the basic use cases. But as you start to go deeper, and I'm sure as what we'll start to talk about here is there's some also really deep use cases in ways that you can use it to use to do very specific things with your work. But I mean, those are just some of the, I think, basics at a, at a high level. First of all, that, that, that's awesome. I love that explanation. It wasn't until recently that we had a very active PMM team or department at Agorapol. So before, I mean, really just a, a year or two ago, it wasn't really clear what a PMM even did. And, and now that makes complete sense. They're representing the product, whereas the rest of marketing folks like me at Agorapol, I'm the chief storyteller, we're representing the brand overall. But let, you mentioned ideation. I'd love if you, you could just dive into that. How are you using AI for generating new ideas in, in that role specifically, and how has it maybe even changed your brainstorming process? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, in PMM, you really have to be able to take features and simplify them into pains and solutions and, and not just pains and solutions, but pains and solutions that are really easy to understand. You know, you don't want that marketing jargon necessarily. You want people to be able to understand what your product does very quickly and how it can help them solve their pain. And. Which, which by the way, if you've ever tried ChatGPT or some of these other tools and to, to write some things, they're actually really good at writing very jargony marketing, if that's what you're, what oh, you're yeah. looking for, but, but also simple marketing too. But, you know, so there's different themes, right? As you look at the different ways that you can do that and just with ideation, you know, if you're trying to relate something to a theme, you could be just bouncing ideas back and forth. Like, Hey, I'm looking for. Uh, a specific theme around this concept, right? And so you could be using it just to do back and forth. These are things that I used to do. I would, I would go talk to our creative team back in the day, you know, the people who are very good at creating very creative messaging or at just a very creative graphics or whatever they're doing. And I used to go talk to those people when I wanted to do some ideation and just bounce ideas back and forth. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just do that with uh, different chat GPT or whatever tools that we're going to use to do that and have that back and forth ideation with the themes and the concepts to, to get those ideas. But same thing too, you know, when you're, 
working on decks that you need to present and you're looking for ideas or ways to phrase things or ways to kind of outline an entire deck, it can really help you with that. So just some of the, just some of the basics there around ideation, I'd say, and just having that kind of back and forth conversation, using it to generate ideas. It's really good at that. I think too, if you're actually creating content, this is where it can really shine because this is where you can just put in a specific topic and it can just pump out a bunch of different ways that, you know, you can write content around that topic. So for content creation, I mean, that's one of the best, uh, that's one of the best use cases that you're seeing in marketing. And I think that people are actioning on, you know, with, with content creation, but it's, it's really easy to generate ideas. All you have to do is essentially put in a couple of keywords and it can give you an, a bunch of different titles, outlines, et cetera, to, to build your content around. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with the capability of AI for ideation. I've been using Claude quite a bit recently and just last week. I fed into Claude all these ideas that I had about how businesses and companies can and should be adopting and integrating AI, how important it is to keep humans in that process, not just, you know, like fact checking and that sort of thing, right? But talking about and understanding how humans in the company are going to be impacted or affected, how their roles can be changed, that sort of thing. So I just dumped all this stuff in there. And I said, hey, I want to turn this into an organized framework that I can actually apply and, and talk about, right, and, and teach and so on. And it was brilliant the way that it not only organized it and structured, it came up with a name, the human framework for harmonize, understand, map, adapt, and nurture. So it, it, it came up with, you know, this, this, an acronym that I could not have done. I'll be honest, you know, right? Because it has the entire library of, of, of words and vocabulary the source there. So it's able to instantly think about everything that we're talking about and all the words and to your point, come up with these really incredible ideas. But you mentioned creating copy. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit more because that's something that generally speaking, folks like you and I in a tech background aren't usually asked to create a lot of copy. That's for the writers, although actually I'm a bit of a writer, but how would you say AI has improved your writing abilities and, and maybe give us some examples? Yeah. So I am actually a terrible writer. I should say I was a terrible <laughs> writer. It was, believe it or not, really bad at it or was really bad at it. I should say initially, uh, just the way my brain works is it's hard for me to like, I understand it. I have it out here, but it's hard for me to get it out on the paper sometimes. And so when AI came along, it came along really just at the right timing for me, right when I had to actually start writing a lot more copy and start getting into a lot more messaging at that time. And it, it's just been so perfect for me because I can just take a bunch of ideas out of my head and random fragments and get those onto paper. And then I can tell AI, Hey, clean this up, give it clarity, package it into one to two short sentences, you know, give it some context around your, Hey, here's my persona. Here's what I'm trying to achieve. These are my talking points. Help me get it there. Right. And, and it can give me that 80% then it can help me get to a point where I can then kind of clean up that last 20%, knowing who my audience is, knowing my persona and, and really just being able to put that final polish and cut on the diamond just to get it exactly where it can be. And it, it really, it really took me from having very rough copy, it not being something that was my necessarily strong point to having leaders within the company saying, wow, you, you do, you did a really great job writing this. You know, this is really spot on. It's very simple. It's very clean. It has a lot of clarity. And so it's, it's made a huge difference for me specifically, you know, within, within that area. But so these are just the basics, right? For the last year and a half, I've actually been super, super busy launching a content hub, right? That was my main focus for about the last year and a half. But I've been collecting all of these different ideas that I'm like ready to work on actually at this point now, because I have a little bit of time off. And so I'm ready to kind of take these ideas to the next level. And I think there's just so much you can do, you know, especially with content repurposing, creating like custom GPTs, you know, like if you look at content repurposing, you can take one piece of content and make it into multiple pieces of content. 
But, you know, you can create a GPT that's specific to your users, that's trained on your personas. Uh, you can have custom built prompts that you want there with your pains. So essentially, you know, one of the ways or one of the things that I used to do is I used to kind of look at who my persona and my audience is, right? So if I'm speaking to a SMB versus a mid-market versus a corporate audience, right? I may ask it, how do I message it to this specific persona or audience? And we have tons of data on that, right? So if you look at, for instance, Gong, you're having sales calls all the time. You're getting pains. You're understanding what people are looking for. You're understanding what's working well, what's not working well. So we can, we can look at all that data individually, but if we can start to analyze all that data and put that specifically into, into context now, and we have that, we can gain insights into that. We can start to ask it questions. We can start to segment it. We can look at what's working and what's not been working as far as sales go, and then base our messaging based on that. So taking all that data and feeding it, we can now really start to improve what our messaging is like, what our copywriting is like when we have all that extra data around it. And so you could then ask it to then write you specific copy. You can ask it to do personalization for you specifically, right? So maybe you're tying that in with some sort of model to say, hey, I want to send this email. This person is in mid-market. They have these interests. This, park, this person's an SMB. They've been interested in this. Now we can specifically start to tailor personalization and messaging within copywriting to those specific audiences based on real data that we're seeing in real time and have that updated over time. So there are some very exciting use cases that I'm kind of getting ready to dive into right now and start looking at more closely, but th there's, there's just so many possibilities out there and it's, 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 it's just so exciting. There are a lot of possibilities. In fact, that's, that's one of the preeminent goals of this show is just to share some specific examples every episode to help the marketers start to wrap their brains around what they can do. Because I've often said, AI isn't a tool like Canva where you know before you even open the app, this is to help me create visual graphics, right? You, you know that, you don't have to be told that. You might need to be known how to do it and that sort of thing. AI is different. It's it's a underpinning technology. It's a layer, right? That can be applied in a myriad ways. And without those examples and ideas, it's really hard to wrap our brains around it. I love how you were talking about custom GPTs and repurposing. I've got a custom GPT that I've created that just encapsulates my style and my voice, my my, my you know writing approach. And I have a different one that encapsulates my target audience. And I've combined them for repurposing because every week I'm coming out with, with these kinds of episodes and I have a LinkedIn newsletter that's based on a existing podcast episode that is written by AI. We're very transparent about that. It's written by Clue, my AI assistant. And it's, it's a custom GPT, right? Where I simply say, okay, here's this past podcast episode. And it draws on my writing style. It draws on our target audience and it creates a great short recap that I'm able to simply publish to LinkedIn with 2000 LinkedIn subscribers to that newsletter specifically. So these are folks who are looking for that on a regular basis. One thing that you mentioned though, that I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about is this idea of, of ICPs and target customers, because that requires a lot of research, right? We can't just say, Hey, chat GPT, who's, who should my target customer going to be? You can't have that conversation with chat GPT, but you have to start it by saying, ask me questions about my business and help us figure this out together. It's going to ask you 10,000 questions. So that's often a time consuming part, but it's also an essential part. How are you leveraging AI yourself when it comes to research? And are there any specific insights that you've been able to uncover? Yeah. I mean, so very specifically, like we kind of talked about earlier, you can do a bunch of Zoom interviews, right? You have your gong data, you have Zoom interviews you can do with customers to better understand insights and pains. And then after you have those interviews, you can start to feed those in. Like you can take those transcripts, feed them in and say, hey, here's all my transcripts. Can you summarize these for me, right? Can you, can you create a summary of all the different pains salute that came up in the call, the different things people are looking for, the different trends you're seeing. So you can, you can use it to help analyze specifically all those different transcripts and the, the trends you're seeing. You can, like we talked about earlier too, look at specific segments. And, and pair that along with your gong calls, 
so that you have all that data that you might have in Gong and being able to then analyze and kind of pull those transcripts out and use those to kind of analyze trends. But even like, you know, one of the things that I used to do is I used to answer a lot of questions, right? So all those, all those different questions, typically on, on average, about a hundred questions a month, because if you look at support, support is helping our customers. Usually it falls on PMM to help support sales, customer success when they have product questions specifically. So, you know, if, if we can train AI to, for instance, look at those questions and answer them for us initially, that frees up a lot of our time as PMMs to be able to do that within, you know, within that aspect, but also too, just doing basic things like, Hey, I'm, I have this new feature I'm launching, take all of our competitors, look at if they have the similar feature, how are they messaging it? You can pop that into a spreadsheet, have a quick comparison of everything where normally I would have had to go to every single website, find that information, record it and so on. Even to just understanding for objection handling objection handling within sales, analyzing calls, things of that nature. So there's, there's a lot of trends we can kind of glean just by feeding it a lot of data and then being able to analyze that data and see what insights come out of it and then how we might best use that. Love those examples. I recently led an initiative at Agora Pulse where using a tool called OneUp, we fed it all of our customer support documentation, all of our blog posts all of our slight internal documentation, SOPs, and that sort of thing. And it's now a, a, a second brain for our entire sales and customer facing team, right? Where they can go to that repository. They can ask questions about the product. They can say, do we have any stories of customers switching from this other competitor? And it'll bring back testimonials and blog posts, linked podcast interviews, all that's there for sales to help alleviate that time. Either the, the time that they're spending talking to a PMM or support staff, right? Or the time they're just wasting looking around in 16 different places and Google drives and other kinds of slight places, trying to find whether or not we even have the information they're looking for, let alone what that might be. Folks, we're talking with Gabe Wahab about the many ways AI is helping product marketing managers excel. And in a moment, we're going to dig into some specific challenges and opportunities, but first. This episode of AI and Marketing Unpacked is brought to you by Magi, your gateway to making generative AI incredibly simple and accessible. Wondering how to seamlessly integrate AI into your marketing strategy without getting bogged down by complexities? That's exactly where Magi shines. It provides user-friendly AI solutions that empower marketers just like you to innovate and elevate your campaigns without needing a degree in data science. Imagine having the power to generate creative content, insightful marketing data analysis, or even personalized customer communications, all at the touch of a button. Magi isn't just about providing tools, it's about transforming your approach to marketing with AI that's tailor-made to be straightforward and effective. So, whether you're looking to boost your content creation process or want deeper insights into your marketing performance, Magi makes it all possible with a few clicks. No fuss, no hassle, just results. Ready to simplify your AI journey? Visit Magi today to learn how their solutions can revolutionize the way you engage with your audience. Don't just market, market smarter with Magi. Tap the link in the show notes. Now, Gabe, I know you're using AI even in everyday tasks, like you know, building spreadsheets and cleaning up data and those kinds of things. Can you elaborate on some of those applications and the time that it's saving you? Yeah, I mean, Aside from the basics, one of my favorite things, you know, and when I say basics, you feed it in, you feed it data, you want it to clean it up. You want it to kind of sync some data from one area into another area and have a really nice clean spreadsheet. I mean, there's everyday basics. You can use it for that. But I think one of my favorite ones is just quickly analyzing features and position positioning of competitors. So, and, and just getting that quickly into a nice little spreadsheet and, and just having that really quick and ready for you. And so instead of having to go from website to website to website and collect that data, we're able to just have that very quickly in one place and collect it all and then organize it into one, one spreadsheet very quickly, something that can just save you just a ton of time there. Got it. Now, one other thing you mentioned before that I want to go back to is repurposing. I, I kind of touched on that, you know, as, a, as an easy example, right? Me taking a long form podcast and blog post recap and repurposing it into a LinkedIn newsletter. How has it impacted your ability to repurpose, co repurpose content across channels and formats? Maybe could you share a success story of how you used AI for repurposing? 
Yeah. I mean, AI repurposing is actually one of my favorite features for it. And, and at HubSpot, we actually had this feature redeveloped called Content Remix that I was using all the time. But it's a very similar, actually, use case to what you said with the podcast, but starting with a webinar, it could be a podcast, any like long form, rich piece of content that you can start with. But I mean, when you create, when you have a webinar, when you have a podcast, typically, you know, you have a th set of things that you're going to do after it, right? You're going to, you're going to create a landing page, maybe for an on-demand version of it. You might want to create a long form piece of content out of it. Like, let me take this and make it into a PDF. Maybe it's going to be a downloadable offer or something like that. Maybe you're going to send an email recap of the webinar to get people to who missed it, maybe to go to download the download the on-demand version. You might create a blog summary post of it. You might want to create some social video snippets to share those little 30 second snippets to promote them on social media. You might want to create an entire pillar and spoke strategy for SEO off it. Maybe you cr talked about just a ton of different topics and then subtopics within there. And so you want to create a hub and spoke strategy. So you can very easily with AI and, and very specifically, I should say, with our, this, this content remix feature that we built, but just take that one piece of content and spider it out into several other pieces of content to kind of get you started on that journey. And so this is, this has definitely been one of by far the most popular features that, that we had because, and I, re I remember a few, I was, I was demoing this on the floor at inbound recently, and there was a couple examples that came up that I kind of overheard and saw while I was out there that were just you know, uh, just so memorable for me. One, one was I was sitting there watching and, and they said, our rep is going to be so mad right now because instead of being here at the conference, she's at, she's in her hotel room doing all of these exact tasks right now that this no. school could be doing for her. <laughs> and so that was interesting. And then I think another one that I saw show up was a person that just very loudly said, you know, holy, you know, the specific word. And I just yeah. looked over and his jaw was on the floor and he was just like, you can, I can't believe you can do that and how fast you can do that now. But the amount of time savings and just repurposing and creating content is, is just massive. It's just massive. Could not agree more because to your point, previously, if folks wanted to do this, because we've had long form video for a long time, many, many years. And if you wanted to repurpose it, that was a large investment of time, particularly if you wanted to do all the things that we knew best practices wise, we should do. Let's say you did a live to Google Hangouts on air, maybe, or a Facebook live or something like that back in the day. Well, you might have 30 to 60 minutes of, of video. Maybe you had a panel or a couple of people talking. That's five to 10,000 words of text. So absolutely you want that to show up on the blog, but you got to clean up that transcript and make it formatted nicely so that people don't feel like they're reading a transcript. They feel like they're reading a, a prose article. And then you want to take out the video clips, but that means you have to watch the entire 30 to 60 minute video at least once or twice more to identify those clips, pull them out, edit those. You know, I mean, it goes on and on and on. You could talk about spending days getting content out of that one thing, which at the end of it is great because now you have, I, I've, I've done a talk, I could tell you nine, literally 96 different things, pieces of content that you could get out of one Facebook live video, but who's got that kind of time? <laughs> and, 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 and if they do have that time, it's because they're up in their hotel room instead of being at the event where they spent thousands of dollars. I mean, by the way, we're talking about a four to $500 a night hotel room, by the way, in downtown Boston. Yes, so this Boston. was not an expensive <laughs> choice. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more though. We're talking about HubSpots. Is it the remix feature? Is that what it's called? Content what, what remix, content? yes. Content Remix, what are the options in terms of what kind of content it can create? Yeah, so you can, so there's both input and output. So from an input perspective, you can input video, you can input audio, you can input from a URL, you can input a PDF or from with the content with, that's within HubSpot. For output then, you can output to video, you can output to audio, you can output to blog posts, you can output to SMS messages, ads, social posts, almost really anything that HubSpot can create, you can output to directly from there. And then the, the, the beauty of it is, is, you know, when you, when you try a lot of tools initially, right, a, a lot of people don't 
they don't really have a lot of success initially, or they're like, it sounds robotic, doesn't sound like me, doesn't have the points on my business and so on. But the, the beauty is, is that when you first set up the product, we have the settings where you put in what your marketing goals are. You set up a brand voice where you feed it writing samples of your content and it'll create a brand voice on a per channel basis, right? So each channel is going to have a different brand voice because Instagram is not going to sound the same as LinkedIn, which is not going to sound the sound as, same to sound as a blog, right? You're going to feed it product descriptions of your products and all the different products that you have. And so it has all this context, right? Which typically you're spending a lot of time putting that into a prompt or training something on all that information where you just put that in initially and it has all that context every time it's going to create this content for you. And so it really gives you the, the easy button because we've essentially figured out what the best LLMs or different models to use for that specific purpose are. We have figured out what the best prompt to write for it is. And we have all the context on your ICP and personas, because that's one of the other things actually is we, we input the ICP as part of it too. And you can actually choose which specific ICP you're creating it for. So we have the information about who you're creating it for, and we have the information about your brand and the products and services that you have. And so it's got a lot of context, which is so critically important when creating content that it has all of that context as well. And so I think it's super important use case, you know, for that to, 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 for repurposing content and just creating content in general. I love these kinds of approaches to using AI where it's not just a blank canvas, like a, like a, a brand new chat GPT chat, where it's up to you to decide what to tell it, what to ask it for, that sort of thing, because the tool's been designed around this idea of, in this case, repurposing content, right? It's asking you up front, provide us all these different things. It's, it's like my friend Ruheen, who we're going to talk to in a, in a couple more episodes in the future. She's got a product, Hey Levi, that is all about developing personas for the brand, mm -hmm. right? So it's asking you all the questions it needs to ask. So it's prompting you as the brand, right? What do you need to do to feed me so that I can create a really fantastic target ICP or multiple personas that you can then feed back in the HubSpot and other kinds of tools and make sure that your marketing is on message. I think that's fantastic, both for marketers and for PMMs, <laughs> for anybody who's in marketing and sales. But let's, let's go back to you and your PMM role for a moment, because I, I want to talk about some of the challenges and limitations maybe that you've faced, uh, particularly with AI in that role and how you've overcome them. Yeah, look, I mean, I think a lot of the challenges that we're going to face are the same challenges that everybody else is going to face. So, I mean, you have things like your hallucinations that you're typically going to have, or it's just coming up with things that are incorrect. You're going to have, did I give it the right prompts? You know, as I was asking it, did I get the prompts right? Am I giving it the right information that it needs? So I don't know if the challenges that we face are necessarily unique, unique to necessarily what everybody else in the market is, is typically facing. It's, it's a lot of the same things you're going to encounter one way or the other, I'd say. That makes a lot of sense. For those who maybe are new to AI, particularly if they're PMs, PMMs, and they're looking to leverage or explore some AI tools, what advice would you give them? And are there any specific tools or approaches that you'd recommend? You know, honestly, just getting started small, start small, start experimenting, and then just continue to grow in what you're doing. Find a specific use case and just try to solve for that specific use case. Because I think the real magic happens is not just kind of going in and writing a few prompts and kind of getting a response. It's, it's finding a specific problem you're trying to solve and then getting specifically, you know, start trying to specifically tackle that challenge, trying to specifically ch tackle that problem. And I know you don't, you don't necessarily have to have something fancy, just start small and then start to grow it, right? Start to refine it as you start to create that solution, start having some of the others within your company, use it and battle test it. And then as you, as you start to, as you start to refine it and have a really nice product, you can then spend more and more time essentially creating what you need to, to solve those challenges for you. I think too, the PMA product marketing Alliance has a, a few resources that you can look at, right? They, they've been, they've been, they have PMM GPT, for instance, which you can start to kind of just play around with and start to just kind of get a feel for, I don't know if it'll necessarily help you in, in your day-to-day -day work, but it's an interesting tool just to kind of help you get a feel. And they also have some articles on AI. You can start to kind of delve into some of what the, 
use cases might be and just some of the, yeah, some of the use cases around how to use AI within PMM as well. Terrific advice. We've had a lot of guests on the show who are echoing what you're saying about just start small. Don't try to completely revolutionize your role in your career in 24 hours because it's not going to happen. And I love the advice of looking at their GPTs. It's something we've kind of hinted at, but haven't really come right out and said, go look at GPT libraries, go look at what other functions and prompts are out there and see what might apply to the work that you're already doing today and adopt one. That's how I got the custom GPT that, I, that I've created now as my showrunner. I, I've learned about it as an idea and I looked at what they were doing and I've adapted it and changed it over the time. But now I have a complete custom GPT where I get to just feed it the guest name, their LinkedIn, they do a Bing search, you know, and we go through this process of developing the show together and it saves me so much time. And that's just one example of the things that I figured out I'm doing on a regular basis and I can bring AI to help me with that. Gabe, my last question for you is, is always one of my favorite ones because it's, I know it's so hard to answer. <laughs> and that is if we're looking ahead at how AI is developing, how do you see it impacting the role, particularly when it comes to product marketing? And are there any specific developments that maybe you're excited about down the road? I, I mean, speed and efficiency are going to be big parts, but that's going to be big parts for everybody, right? So one of my, one of my favorite things I think is kind of relating AI to a calculator and when calculators first came out and what they did at that time, a calculator was first used by an engineers, right? Or people who are doing tons and tons of math calculations all met by hand manually. And so what it did is it just sped up the amount of time that people had to spend doing those calculations, which allowed them to then focus on, you know, core problems, being able to get to market faster and so on. So I think within every role, whether you're going to be a PMM or whatever that role is, you're going to see the same thing with AI. It's just going to become part of everyday life. It's going to, you're going to see it in all your different tools. You're going to have your own custom tools that you're going to build for, you know, specific use cases that you might use, but ultimately it's going to make you, allow you to work much faster and, and allow you to then get to market much faster as well with what you're doing for messaging, with what you're doing for research, with all the different things that you may be doing. It's just going to really begin to accelerate that process. But then on top of that. I think outside of like the time savings and efficiency side, I'm extremely excited for like personalization at scale, optimization and testing at scale, and just being able to do some of those things with AI in the mix, you know, because you've never been able to necessarily say, Hey, let me go out and test messaging at scale on a one-to-one -one basis and see what the results look like. And now we can, we can do that. And we can get that information, especially if you have enough traffic to get it very quickly, you can get it very quickly. And so I'm really excited for that. You know, I, th I think you went over this, hadn't just had a show on it not too long ago on Notebook LM and some of the really exciting things I think that are going to come out of that. I'm, I'm excited for the continuation of what Claude Sonnet's doing and what Flux is doing with image generation. I think image generation still has some, some room to go, but I mean, just overall, it's, it's exciting times and the speed at which things are changing and, and so is, is really amazing. But those are some of the things that I'm, I'm excited about. It, it is exciting. Things are moving so fast. You mentioned Notebook LM where we've just got such an improvement in just the past six to 12 months in terms of voice recognition and the ability for AI to generate voice that is very human-like on the fly. I recently saw a video from Chris Penn where he was demonstrating his, I think he called it artificial personas. I might be getting that wrong, but it's, you know, he's using AI to develop personas. And then he's, he's loading all that up in back into an AI so that he can have a conversation with it. And I'll link to that video demo in the notes because it really, it was a really transparent and phenomenal demonstration of how far AI has come and its ability to have a conversation real time with a real human about a very specific topic that would help the human. So in this case, from the PMM perspective, it's becoming a really valuable tool for helping to train sales staff on new product features, for instance, or give them the training of, you know, pretending to go into a sales call to talk about a new feature or demo. Really exciting times. And 
this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much, Gabe. For folks who want to know more about you, maybe want to connect with you or follow you, where can they go? Yeah, LinkedIn's usually the easiest way. You can also go to my website, gabewahab.com. That one of those two areas are easiest way to get in contact with me. Terrific. Thank you so much, Gabe. Folks, appreciate you listening today. We'll have all of those links in the show notes below. And I got to tell you, if this is your first foray into AI and marketing, I've got a resource just for you. It's linked down below. It's the AI Marketing Primer. It's going to help you understand all these little buzzwords and specific labels we've been talking about throughout the show, LLMs, Genesis, Claude, ChatGPT. What's the difference between all these things? What does it all mean to you? And how can you learn all that and get ahead in your career? Check that out in the links below. Until next time, welcome to The Grid. Thanks for joining us on AI and Marketing Unpacked. I hope today's episode has inspired you and given you actionable insights to integrate AI into your marketing strategies. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and consider leaving a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts and answer any questions you might have. Don't forget to join us next time as we continue to simplify AI and help you make a real impact in your marketing efforts. Until then, keep innovating and see just how far AI can take your marketing. Thank you for listening and have a fantastic day.